I really appreciate the opportunity and extremely excited to be here introducing this new latest offer from GRC. Um, my name is Ben Smith. I'm the Chief Product Officer here. Um, I just started at GRC in January, so I wish I could claim credit for this, but uh, unfortunately, I'll have to I'll have to wait till the next great offer. But uh, very excited to bring it. I, I think um, the presentation today will will be uh, will be exciting and interesting. Um, <laughs> this is a, a re reimagination of everything we've done before. Really um, taking into account the lessons learned that we've uh, we've had from 12 years of of product uh, installations and and service with our customers. So we're very pleased and excited to bring it to you today. A um, little bit about GRC. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar or, or weren't able to uh, participate in the previous hour, um, GRC has been uh, in the one phase immersion cooling business for 12 years. And uh, as you can see on the slide, which I will not read, um, <laughs> we've, we've been at it a while. We, we've got, um, you know, good funding. We've got a lot of customers. Uh, we are in 17 countries around the globe, and uh, we've got 19 patents and, and more pending. So we're very technically mature and product mature. And, um, you know, we have a proven return on investment, a proven TCO, proven PUE, um, all those great things that people are looking for when they're kicking the tires of new technology. Um, we can sort of say we've been there and done that. So, <laughs> we've we've learned a lot, and and that's the culmination of that learning is what you'll see today. Um, a quick word about immersion cooling for those that might be seeing this the first time. The best thing we can do is just sort of share customer impressions the first time they actually realize what they've done, right? And and you know, there's here's a couple, right? Just you know, have a little fun. Um, hey, it's it's really quiet. I don't need my earplugs, right? And and I don't have to dress for skiing. I, I'm, I'm going in my data center and I can be comfortable in there and, and I can have a good conversation with, with the guy next to me. I don't have to go outside to do it. And um, hey, I can see my whole data center. You know, Jerry can't hide over there in the corner anymore. <laughs> so, uh, so those are first impressions. But, um, you know, what is, what is single phase immersion cooling? Um, basically, it's, it's cooling your IT equipment by um, immersing it in a fluid, right? And, and we use coolants here. Um, and uh, you can see the little diagram just shows, hey, we have, we have a water loop and we have a coolant loop, and, and that shouldn't be new to cooling. Um, the coolant loop, the type of coolant is, is a very benign, um, you know, non-conductive uh, fluid that's very safe and, and wonderful for the environment. Um, and then we have some pumps, and, that, and this is really GRC's innovation is, is the uh, agitation of the, of the fluid in addition to the natural convection properties that really add to and enhance the, uh, the density and cooling capabilities. And, uh, and, and the, one of the great things about immersion cooling is that depending on your densities, of course, a lot of what we do is warm water. And, and because of that, and because of the heat temperatures of the racks, it opens up many opportunities for customers to have huge savings and, and much, you know, really terrific sustainability um, impacts, you know, environmental impacts. A lot of pressure these days on data centers to reduce their, their carbon footprint, whether it be their energy or water utilization, right? And, um, and so uh, single phase immersion can help a lot with that. And just to round this out, you know, what does it solve? And, and there's a lot of focus and attention on um, liquid cooling in general, uh, single phase immersion included, on, you know, high power compute and, and high density racks. And, and that's not inappropriate, but it sort of um, blinds us from looking at the rest of the story, right? And, and so you see on here, there's many reasons why um, customers move to immersion and, and really sort of a side benefit is the fact you can you can have more density but there's great cost benefits you know capex and opex there's terrific sustainability benefits there's reclaiming your data center space when you're out of power or out of space and and this enables you to instead of build a whole new data center or move your your business you can actually just reclaim and, and start again so great great ways 
that we can help our customers using immersion cooling beyond just high power compute. You know, I mentioned, I think, a couple of times that we have a lot of experience and a lot of customer base, and, and we've learned a lot from that. Um, we've been iterating our products for 12 years, and, and frankly, this was a chance for us to really sit back and say, you know, if we, if we started again, knowing what we know and, and what our customers are asking, what would we build? Let's not be iterative. Let's, let's reimagine the whole thing. And, and so, you know, we sat down and, and, and we diagrammed out a, a whole lot of possibilities. Um, but the main things in mind were how do we improve performance and footprint and cost and, you know, all those things that everybody cares about, including sustainability, right? And, and so what we've got, and you can see here, you know, sort of the, the Generation 9 and the Generation 10. And, and, you know, people ask probably what the Ice Rack Series 10 stands for. It's our 10th generation product, and we're very proud of that history. Um, but you can see um, impressively what we've done with this reimagination is we've, we believe we've doubled the performance, and we can do that in half the footprint of our prior generation products. Um, this is, uh, this is, and I'll show later that this is not just, this is not about, you know, us versus air cooling historically. This is us really learning from our customers about what they needed us to do and improving on our own offer. And so we're, you know, we think we're 50% of the cost per kilowatt with the improved performance. And, uh, we can use less power and water. Uh, because of that as well. And and really, we also wanted to take the approach of simplifying everything for our customer. And, uh, you know, everything from the from the order and design process all the way through, okay, I need to pull a server out and ma maintain it and do things like that. And, and then even, you know, what do I do afterwards? So, uh, and, and lastly, and not unimportantly, is the visual appeal, right? And, and I think as this product, you know, there's a lot of proof and evidence that immersion cooling is going to explode over the next few years. And um, data center customers have a certain expectation about a look and feel of a data center. And we think we've, we've done a good job here with the visual appeal and sort of uh, getting back to what a data center should and look, look, look like, especially those professional data centers, which, uh, which earn revenue. Right. Um, so, so we're excited about that and, and uh, ready to get into the detail. So let me introduce you to the Ice Rack Series 10 200 kilowatt one phase immersion system. And uh, you can see here, you know, the end view of the, of the system with its two doors open. We like to call that the gull wing view. <laughs> and, uh, and, and let me get into the details. So we have um, a slide here that's just very high level just to break out, you know, what it looks like. And, and I think the most important thing to express here is that this is a completely integrated system now, right? The, the picture you might have noticed prior, you know, before and after, those racks historically and the, and the CDU, the coolant distribution unit, they were all separate components that needed a little space around them for moving around, doing maintenance, et cetera, putting your piping. Um, you know, a great product, great offer, had a lot of great benefit, the, the space the space consuming nature of that and, and the sort of visual nature of that was a little bit um, disconcerting for our customers. So here we've built a completely integrated system where the coolant distribution, the, uh, the racks themselves, the containment, which is very important, and the distribution um, module in the middle, all of that, while they're big, you know, big individual components, easily uh, integrate into a single system at the customer site. And, uh, and so just, you know, what are these things? Well, we'll start with the coolant distribution unit, the CDU. Uh, very powerful, two times more powerful, and, and in less than, probably in 40% of the footprint of our prior uh, CDU. So tremendous space savings there. And the fact that it will merge directly up to the racks um, should indicate, you know, the, the, the serviceability of this will all be in that front. Um, and if you, you can actually remove some side panels as well. Uh, so that's the only place you need any space. Um, it's redundant. We have redundant pumps inside. Um, we can, we can do things like redundant heat exchangers. We can even have redundant CDUs. Um, you see the CDU on one end of this product. 
you could put a second one on the other end and literally have redundant CDUs. Um, I'll, talk, I'll skip to the distribution module because it sort of completes the, the flow of the, of the coolant. Um, this allows some scalability. So we talk about a two to four rack system. Um, we can ship this as a duo. If you need super high density racks, um, you can have two racks with a, with a CDU and a distribution center module. Um, so in that point, it would be the end module, right? And, uh, and then later on, if, if you realize you actually have some extra capacity, um, or if you know up front your densities are going to be a little lower, you can make it a four rack system by simply snapping two, two other racks right onto the end. And, um, and so let me talk about, you know, a little, a little bit about the, the patent pending rack balancing we have and the maintenance CDU quick connect. That central module enables us to um, really work very closely with the controller, the intelligent controls in the, in the CDU to monitor what's happening with the fluid between the two or four racks and ensure balancing appropriately between those racks seamlessly with no manual interruption. Um, which historically with, with multi-rack systems has been a little challenging. It's one of the key things our customers told us is we don't want to manually have to adjust, you know, the height of the fluid. We, we need you to automate it. So we've done that. Um, the containment under the racks, uh, it's really under everything. It's all the gray in the pictures here. And, and this is built in containment. Uh, by, by code, in many places, um, you have to be able to contain fluid, and, and obviously a data center is very important. Any sort of leak, any sort of issue with, with the coolant or the water um, needs to be able to be contained. And historically, we've, we've just relied on third-party containment products, which tend to not really be very well integrated. Right, either it, it takes a bunch of extra space, or or you use bladders and things like this that you've got to hook up. And and so here we've built it in; it's automatic, it's standard with the offer. Each component has its own containment area, but they connect together for overflow. So if anything was to happen, you know, more than a, a drop, right, you, it will actually level and share through the entire containment. So it can contain up to 110% of an entire rack of fluid if it needs to. We've never ever had to utilize that, but it, it has to be there by code. And, and we thought building it in and making it standard, it, it makes it look better. And uh, it, it obviously helps us save a lot of space as well. Uh, and then we have the racks, um, you know, flex flexible power density up to 100 kilowatts per rack. Um, even even with a four rack system, you could do 100 kilowatts with chilled water. You know, we, we focus a lot on warm water and uh, and getting away from chilled water, but it's very viable for customers who need super high density um, and have a chilled water loop already to just easily snap this in. And so that's uh you know that's something we've been able to do before and we maintain today. Um, it has integrated cable management. I'll talk more about that. A um, lot of challenges with customers in cable management no different than an air rack solution historically. So we, we've done a lot of work there. And, uh, and we like to say we're OEM diagnost uh, device agnostic, right? And what that means is we don't have any particular uh, server design um, that we, we sell to our customers. We allow them to choose the servers of their choice. And we have standard 19 inch mounting here that allows us to uh, populate these with any devices you want. Um, obviously, there's a conversion process that we, we do with our customers to make sure those servers and, and networking uh, and other IT devices are prepared and ready to be immersed, um, which is not tremendously disruptive, but, uh, but required to ensure components last as long as they should. And uh, just to visually demonstrate probably the best thing I can do for you in terms of what this product will do for you and what this uh, what immersion cooling in general can do for you. This is a, this is a, a build out of a, a 1700 kilowatts of power, which provide a thousand kilowatts of compute, a megawatt of compute. This is also imagine a one megawatt air cooled data center with your traditional vertical racks. And you've got a few generators in the back to provide all the power. Uh, a lot of that power is the cooling load. And so um, with our prior generation product, 
we've done plenty of installs where we've been able to work with our customers who may say, I've run out of space or I've run out of power or both. And we come in and we do this, right? So historically we could reclaim a lot of space. You see the generator, you know, goes down. And, and so we, we provide a much, much better PUE. And basically what you see here is we're, we're going to reduce that 1700 kilowatts of power for the whole data center down to 1,030 for the cooling uh, to get that 1,000 kilowatts of compute. So we have a proven 1.03-ish PPUE, um, and that's what enables this, right? Now, this is what our new product will do. It's sort of eye-opening, isn't it? <laughs> so it's uh, we're very excited about the potential for this and and where we can help our customers even more so um, here, here at GRC, we are uh, we are very into sustainability, right? We are very sustainability minded. We're very green. You know, our people come into the office. We don't have plastic bottles. Blah blah blah. We do all the, the nice nice stuff there. But what we're, we're most excited about the fact that we can really help the change, right? That's that's emerging in the world for the need for every industry to look at their their sustainability and data centers aren't excluded, right? Um, there's been a lot of focus that I've seen over the last couple of years, more and more on the water utilization of data centers, the power utilization of data centers. It's, obviously, it's going to increase the, the, the need for data centers. I don't think any, anybody would say that that's not going to happen. Um, so more and more, you know, it was, it was OPEX help us with our efficiencies and OPEX, and then it became a CAPEX challenge. Help us, you know, thanks for that, but now help us with our CAPEX issues. How can you help us build a data center cheaper, right? And now it's OPEX, CAPEX, and sustainability. And, uh, and, and we're, we're very pleased with that, obviously, for many reasons, but um, it really allows us to show what we've been able to do in the last 12 years. And, and here you can see um, we've, We've been helping customers for a long time, and these are real numbers from various customer installs that, that we've been able to do. We've actually accomplished these things, right? We've been able to lower your infrastructure energy for cooling um, by 95%, right? And I think the prior example that I showed is, is, is really that. Um, but we also help with OPEX in many ways, and, and you can see tremendous savings on OPEX. Um, whether it be just the electrical savings of, you know, the cooling equipment itself, but also imagine you're not going to put fans in your servers anymore. And, and that's a pretty substantial use of electricity in servers. So, again, it just goes right down to your electric bill and, and, and carbon footprint. Um, we do reduce or eliminate water usage depending on how warm a water loop you can use. Um, you know, obviously we talked about you can snap into chillers, but this gives you an opportunity to do a lot more, right, from a sustainability perspective. Uh, we use a lot less floor space. Um, you know, there is an opportunity to build smaller data centers for the need, which obviously would be huge. Uh, you know, your CapEx um, could be tremendously influenced by that and, uh, and the fact that if you do use warm water and you and you get all these power benefits, you're gonna you're gonna be able to reduce the amount of power needed, the size of your size and number of generators, UPSs, et cetera, right? So so lots of benefit there. If you're building something from the ground up, you know, it's a very different discussion. And uh, and we we see carbon emissions overall being able to cut up to twenty percent. So I think we have a, a terrific sustainability story. I think liquid cooling and immersion cooling in particular has a very good sustainability story. Um, it's not the only story. CapEx, OpEx, high, enabling all that through the adoption of high density, which we, which we allow, right? And, uh, and so, yeah, this, this product's no exception. It actually helps us improve our results um, in the market. And, uh, and so, you know, we, we continue to be excited to bring highly sustainable solutions to our customers. And then just to, just to let everybody know, this is, this is not prototype. This is real. We're ready for orders.